Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. <clears throat> o hope of the living and harbor of the rest, where the weary in this world find rest, may we be received into the harbor of reconciliation, and the place of rest with all those who please your divine will. And we raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. O oh Lord, I have truly sinned. Who can claim more sins than I? I know you can pardon me. Since you came to seek the lost, bring me back into your fold. You can do this now. We've been doing it for five days, right? So... The next page. The pages are out of order. Oh, is it out of order? That's weird. cast me from your sight. I know that my sins are great. You alone are perfect, Lord. Pardon all my sins and faults. I apologize, I skipped the page. Well, we'll finish this hymn. We'll just finish this, I'm sorry. By love has the saints been known. take the prayer at the beginning, <clears throat> page 77. Lord, have mercy on us and save us. O Christ, our God, inflame our hearts with love, that we may love you and each other. Fill us with faith and confirm us in true, in true and firm hope. May we preserve in good work, persevere in good works, that we may be justified by you. Please your will all the days of our lives, and glorify and thank you now and forever. Amen. So now we're on the Husoyo. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the gate of mercy, open to sinners who knock on it. The hyssop who purifies the impure who come close to him. To the good one we glory and honor on this day and all the days of our lives and forever. Glory to you, O Holy One, you descended from the heavenly dwellings to the earthly depths. In your compassion you took the form of a slave to forgive your servants. You walked on the waves of the sea in order to sanctify Adam, who was created in the image of your majesty. O oh Lord, you sanctify those who are impure. With your hyssop you purified sinners and made them whiter than snow. 
Through your powerful grace, forgive me and all your servants who ask for pardon in their faults and forgiveness of their sins. As you forgave the family of Cornelius through the hand of Simon Peter the Apostle, in the same way may pardon of sins descend upon us and upon all the children of your flock who have been redeemed by your precious blood. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. You died because of our sins. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the sanctifying Hyssop who cleansed our wounds in your compassion. You are the treasures of your Father. Through you and with you our supplications are heard. Our faults are forgiven and our souls are protected. And on the glorious day of your second coming, mercy shall be given to us. And we will raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. Now we know this melody, right, Dame Fifa? We know the robber mine. I have sinned against heaven and before you said the Son, though my heart now condemns me, you are greater than my heart. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, 
but we even boast our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because of the love of God has been poured out onto our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with the difficulty does one die for a just person. Through perhaps for a good person, one might even give and find the courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once we are reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Praise be to God always. Blessed are they who have their transgressions forgiven and their sins forgotten. To the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity, for in this instance, give you this one. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense, and we ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle Matthew writes, The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate, and they said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that this grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him away and say to the people, he has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. And Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go and secure it as best you can. So they went and they secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting a guard. This is the truth, peace be with you.
But God proves his charity towards us because when as yet we were sinners, according to the time, Christ died for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This epistle is from the fifth chapter of the letter to the Romans. And it's about past, present, and future. Of course, because we live in the 21st century, we forget that the people also to whom St. Paul was writing this letter to the Romans, for those individuals, the events of our Lord's death and resurrection were also historic. The people in Rome hadn't been there. They hadn't followed it any more than we have. And so what St. Paul is reminding them is that this past event has a value, which is why you're Christians in Rome. But it also has a present value because it orients us towards the future. And so he simply brings up the fact that God has shown us, shown us and shown and demonstrated, proven to us his great love by the fact that when we, the human race, when we were enemies of God, sinners, in antagonistic position to him, as all of the fallen world is, because it's not what God wishes it to be. You can put it into a human image if you want. We have great expectations for our children. They don't always live up to them. So there is a disappointment in the sense of what they could have done and that they did not realize. That's the sense, if we want in human terms, of God's disappointment. Your children spinning out or doing something doesn't affect you directly. Your life continues as it was. And of course, sin doesn't change God in any way whatsoever. And yet, the antagonism, the, en the, the enmity, is because we've not realized what we were meant to have done. And so St. Paul says that when we were sinners, in this great cosmic disappointment of the fall of Adam, God proved to us his love by going the next step and sending his son to die for us. That's why the rest of the letter in the middle part, St. Paul says, you know, but think about, we would have a difficult dying for someone who's good, who's close to us. You know, we think about in the modern world, people who will donate a kidney for someone. They still have to go through surgery. They still have to go through all that so that someone else might live. To do it for a stranger is quite extraordinary. It's already difficult enough you're doing it for your cousin. So St. Paul is saying that it's true, indeed. It's true that to die for a good person is difficult. But to die for your enemy? To sacrifice your life for someone who has spit in your face. That's impossible for us to imagine. And that's why St. Paul is reminding us that this historic fact of what Christ did for us on Good Friday is God's proof for us of his divine love. We shouldn't waver in the faith. That's why, in a sense, it's kind of sad. As we go forward over these years, hopefully we will develop a better understanding of this magnificent ceremony this morning. And don't feel bad. Even when I was at our cathedral in Brooklyn, I think there were 15 of us. So you're actually doing pretty well compared even to the cathedral. We had priests in the confessional because normally during this ceremony you have extra priests. They'll be in the confessionals and they hear confessions while this ceremony is going on while we are rapturously singing these beautiful hymns. And of course, that day when I was there, I sat in the confessional and listened to the hymns through the door with nobody coming in. So we've missed the point and we've lost somewhere what this ceremony of reconciliation and forgiveness are meant to be. When we finish this ceremony this morning, it is Easter. We finish with the great acclamations of our Lord's resurrection. That is why the patriarch reminded us that our fast goes until noon on Saturday of the great light. And so St. Paul is doing something similar, reminding us is that God's love has been proven to us, and yet we're not done yet. Because now God has given us his divine spirit, which works within our lives, 
reconciles us with by compassion and the mercy of God, and in this life turns us towards the glory of God. So that knowing our historic redemption in time by Christ's death, we have hope, St. Paul says in this epistle. We have hope in Christ's glorious resurrection. And so tomorrow morning, of course, we have the procession of the cross and the veneration of the cross, which if we could make it be so in the Syriac tradition, it would be alive and it would be radiating light because that is the vision of the Syriac. We refer it to not only being a life-giving cross, but to be living. The Syriac fathers talk about the cross going with Christ into the tomb and coming forth with him in glory. And that is the sign of the Son of Man that will appear on the last day. That glorious, living, luminous, life-giving, and living cross. So that St. Paul in this chapter 5 to the Romans, he's reminding us that we will escape death and the future wrath because you're faithful now. And we have that conviction of our hope because of, the spiritual, because of the Spirit of God that has been poured into us. So St. Paul is saying, as we mentioned at the beginning, past, present, and future. There is a historic moment, writing to the Romans, a historic moment that had taken place 20 years before. But now God is working within you at Rome. God is working within you at St. Joseph's. God is working within us so that we have this established hope and solid vision that we know that in the eschatological, the last day of judgment, we will escape that wrath to come because of the embrace of love that we have at this moment. So that St. Paul says at the beginning of this epistle, as it's quoted, that being justified there by faith, we believe and we see and therefore we embrace, that therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We are where God wants us to be. When we speak about being enemy with God, as we say, it's that we're not arriving where God's love desires us to be. Now, God doesn't expect any of us at this moment to be perfect. We're still breathing. And we have the beauty that within this life of time, in this world, we always have the ability to remake ourselves, psychologically, emotionally, but even more importantly, St. Paul reminds us we have the ability to remake ourselves by the divine presence of the Spirit of God working in believers. And that is a profound sense of peace. That is a profound sense of hope. And therefore, when he says in verse 10, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, that in Adam, born into this world, born from our mother's wombs, we were born separate from God. We were born, therefore, as sinners. Remembering again that the word sin means nothing other than mistake in Saxon, our old English. We were born mistaken. We weren't wrong. We were just not what we were meant to be. And therefore, we were born separate from the divinity and therefore, St. Paul says, in enmity with what God's plan really was for us. And so he says, but now we are alive at this present moment with our faith, with our baptism, and by the graces that God gives us, and he has poured forth with us even a greater hope now to find glory on the day of judgment. Because at this present moment, we are in grace, we are at peace, and we are at charity. That's the meaning of this whole ceremony. It's the meaning of this day. And so we can finish with the last quotation from St. Paul. And it is hope that does not confound. It's a source of enlightenment, not confusion. And hope does not confound because the charity of God has been poured forth into our hearts by the Holy Spirit 
who has been given to us. Remembering always that aspect of St. Paul refers to the Holy Spirit as being the down payment. It is God's promise that I give you this now, your faith in this church building, in these pews. I have given you this to promise you not just simply that you live now in my love, but as a down payment to promise you the transcendent glory to come on the day of my son, on the day of Christ. And that is a very beautiful thing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we shall continue, if I turn my pages correctly this time, to page 87, is that what you have? You know this minor, right? I know, we have to start it, but I know what it, all right, well, I guess we'll have to just do our 2D as usual. O hearts full of anger, take heed, go make peace with your foes, and embrace them with love and compassion. Engrave on your souls Jesus Christ, as he humbled himself, you should humble yourselves and grant pardon. Does anger still reign in your hearts? Then you turn from the Lord, Christ who died on the cross, your true teacher. If love in if your neighbor is gone, then you hate Jesus Christ, who taught mercy and love and forgiveness. Let Christ be our teacher and guide, for he showed us the way to forgive from our hearts. Imitate him, all foes shall be turned into friends, and together in peace we shall sing praises to him who forgave us. Let us confess, adore, and praise the most holy and glorious Trinity. Everyone's supposed to bow profoundly. Let us confess, adore, and praise the most holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Give me a So the beauty of this ceremony is that we begin in penitence and we finish with that glory that's promised for the day of Christ. So we have our Kaddishat, but already the proclamation that our Lord has risen from the dead. Kaddishat, aloho, Kaddishat, hayel tono, Kaddishat, Amen. Amen. 
Eventually, we'll be doing the Abun de Bashmayel, but for the moment, we'll still do this in English. Excuse me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our kind, now and forever. O Christ, our Lord, accept the penance that we now offer to you and to one another. May the grace and the power of your Spirit come to purify, sanctify, and save us. May your life be a model for our own lives so that we may live imitating your life, your death, and your resurrection. May we reach that day which will unite us to you and to each other. And we raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. All right, now you learn it. Al Messiah come. Haken come. All right, but I want you to do it in Syriac. So Christ is Mashiho. All right. Come. Come means as risen. Mashiho come is Christ has risen. Men, men, men. That which means from or out of Kabro. Kabro is tomb. Kabro. Kabro. Q A B R O. Kabro. So Mashiho kom men kabro. Mashiho kom men kabro. And that would be normally in our Eastern tradition, this is the salutation that you say for all of the Easter season when you meet someone. It's not, hi, it's Mishiho kom men kabro. And when they answer, so shariro is true. Shariro. Shariro yith makes it an adverb. So from true, to truly. Shariro is true. Okay? Shariro. Shariro. Shariro yith. Shariro yith. Shariro yith kom. Shariro yith kom. So you don't want to leave, let the Greeks get ahead of you on this because, of course, theirs is Christos Anesti, Christ has risen. Elitherie Anesti, he has truly risen. So Shariro yith, yith. Kom is the answer. Now, Father, just so we know, the Masihim... That's Arabic. That That's Arabic. That's Arabic. Al-Masih Kam. That's Arabic. Okay. Hakem Kam. That's as true. Hakem, truly, Kam, risen. You almost, it's almost identical. You see it with the, the Syriac. Okay. All right. Now that you have been perfected in the Syriac lesson, <laughs> we are going to do it three times, right? You can do this. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mishiho kom men kabro. Shari ro yith kom. Right? So your response is truly risen. Shari ro yith kom. Shari ro yith kom. Shari ro yith kom. All right. So, Mishiho kom men kabro. Mashiho kom men kabro. Mashiho kom men kabro. Beautiful. God bless you all with a blessed Pascha. Boys. 
And that's the last lesson. So we call it Pesho. Pesho. We call it in Hebrew, uh, the word for Passover is Pesach. We learn the classes. So in the Aramaic, it's Pesho. Pesach, Pesach. Pesco. So in front of your bulletins this weekend, it says Pesco. But not in Syria, but 